Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin. And I'm, co- I'm your co host, Dean. Yes. Still this is Dean's first like official episode <laughs> of like being an actual like co host on like an interview. So he's going to be still a little getting used to that, man. Still getting used to that. <laughs> a little bit rocky on that. But um, today, with another um, awesome episode of Within the Barons, our interview series. We have John Campo. Uh, oh my God, I'm so awful with names. <laughs> Campo Piano and Gary Smart, who are um, the lead creators of the Disneywise, uh, the story of it documentary that just landed on um, Streambox, and you can st- stream it on other places too, right? Like on on iTunes yeah. and Apple. Well, Apple is iTunes, but YouTube yeah, and, and all that stuff. Um, watch this as soon as it dropped. Absolutely amazing. Um, Pennywise and just it itself has always been a really big um, influence on me as a kid. Um, I'm going to be 29 this year, um, so this I watched this a little bit later in life. But um, I grew up um, with with it. I read the book. I'm not even kidding, like nine times, <laughs> and it's a huge book. Um, I actually just got this. Uh, I think last year was the the vinyl. It was oh, yeah. freaking awesome nice, with yeah. the score on it. So the work that you know uh, the both of you did and and Chris who couldn't make it today, um, it means a lot. And I've watched this documentary about three times so far. Um, more, than, more than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to get it to to Dean, um, but unfortunately he's in the UK, so he wasn't able to really screen it. But I mean, I told him it's like. No, it's just pretty much behind the scenes and everything. So he's waiting to watch that one, um, and he, he's really, really amped for it. We it's... tried so hard. We we tried VPNs, like Dustin gave yeah. me his VPN login. We tried, you know, Screenbox wasn't working for me. I sat, I was trying to hunt high and low. I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it will be. It's very soon, UK. Very, very yeah. soon. We're just we're just in the final kind of like contracts at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to, you know, right off the bat, kind of say thank you to uh, to John, Gary, and Chris for putting this five years in the making documentary um, finally out for everybody. So thank you, thank you very much, guys, for doing this. It means nice. a lot. But um, one thing I do want to do whenever I do these interviews, I always like to kind of go back to the basics um, with anybody that we we talk to. So I guess starting with you, John, um, what you know kind of um, sparked the the uh, need or want to start doing documentaries and, and film writing and and stuff of the like um it was a complete accident for me um <laughs> justin white who was my filmmaking partner on the pet cemetery documentary that we did on earth and untold oh, um, i just watched that too we um living in new england we're in stephen king country and um pet cemetery was the first of his films to be shot in maine um so we wanted to go see the filming locations and we went up to Maine um, starting in, I think it was 2011 and just were documenting the locations. And through the course of doing that, we were talking with a lot of people that were there that had a part in the film or, and they would say, well, you should talk to this person or they had photos that they took of the production. And then we thought, well, maybe we'll make like a little YouTube video of the locations. And then that, it, that evolved from there. And, and before we knew it, you know, we kind of had a bunch of these interviews, a bunch of photos, like, well, maybe we'll make it into a film, you know, a documentary. I never had any ambitions of doing it before that. Um, and it just kind of blossomed from there. Um, and I got bit by the bug and wanted to keep making documentaries about films that I love. Yeah, kind of really yeah, surreal. Is it really surreal kind of seeing those locations there and like seeing the drain that Stephen King wrote, you know, that, that famous scene of, you know, Georgie and stuff like that. You know, when you actually see that there, is it like, that must be really surreal. Yeah, it's like you kind of step into the, the TV in a way, you know. Yeah. I had the same yeah. experience going to Martha's Vineyard as a kid where they filmed Jaws, and it pretty much looks the wow. same. So you're kind of like wow. ste- stepping into these movies that you've watched countless times at home. Um, it's always a very cool experience. Um, so that's that's what got me started, basically. Oh, wow. What about you, Gary? Uh, it's very similar to John in terms of obviously, obviously our interest in uh, films and horror, but uh, I had mine started a long time ago, so I had become really friendly with the actor Don Kaufer, who was in Return of the Living Dead, uh, Weekend at Bernie's, and, and so on. And I got really friendly with him, we came really close. And myself and a chap called Christian Sellers decided to write a book on the Return of the Living Dead franchise at one to five. 
and obviously because we got friendly with Dom, we always got friendly with Beverly Randolph, and obviously then uh, that list went on and on with John Delpin, Tom Matthews. So we kind of set out this little task of writing this book, I and mean, we kind of achieved that, and we had it published in worldwide for a company called Plexus. And then because that was dead, now that was from the, the guys that made Never Sleep Again, Crystal Lake Memories. Uh, I got kind of friendly with them, obviously on the scene, and they asked me to write that with Christian again, so we did. Uh, same kind of time we were doing our own screens in Birmingham, uh, in the UK, where I, I used to live. Um, we did a few kind of like retrospective screens with Don over to do Return of the Living Dead as a guest. We had uh, a Hellraiser one. And then um, because we did the Hellraiser uh, documentary, uh, documentary, Hellraiser screen, sorry, um, we kind of made friends with about four or five of the cast and we kind of realised that nobody ever did a documentary on Hellraiser before. I mean, been one on Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, obviously uh, on Friday the 13th. And because Hellraiser is a very British film, American Money, but filmed in the UK, and so is the second film as well. And my one of my favorite actors, Kenneth Clannan, is in number two. Uh, we said, let's, you know, kind of naively, like John said, let's do a documentary on, on that, those couple of films, make it, you know, real small, uh, low budget, meet cast and crew, do as much as we can in the UK, and just get it out there, you know, however it gets out there independently. YouTube or Vimeo or something, and that just snowballed and got massive. And then that became Leviathan, the story of Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2. A, a, in looking back, a very long documentary, which was nine hours long. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> too long, too long. People like the length of it, but it's just it's too long. It's way too long. And we'll come to obviously how we've evolved as filmmakers since then. But then we, we recut it for Arrow. It was released on the Arrow cut, it was released on Shudder two hours yeah. and, and an hour and a half and then Brewster came along you also called Brewster and then obviously then John came along I kind of knew John a little bit um just obviously as you get you know as a fellow filmmaker and then obviously John and I connected then so loads of little projects were happening it just snowballing as the years went by oh wow so you got you both are like in this real deep now and I know I was uh, talking mm. to you before John like I saw um snapper um in salem horror fest last year which was oh, oh, yeah. amazing um I've frozen there guys I think, hey, did i bore you that much dean that you disappeared i'm sorry there's a lot of gremlins in the system today and <laughs> it's all couldn't good couldn't have picked a worse time sorry guys yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all, all good. good i've got i live in i live on a farm in the middle of the countryside so the oh. signal's very very hit and miss oh. where i am so sorry it's all good <laughs> well, um, but yes, that, yes. So that was it. That was the journey. How we got, obviously, you know. Uh, I mean, we did Robodoc as well in between that and oh, yeah. um, before we met John. Uh, that's how we kind. Of, that's the stage we got to to meet in John, and then working with John. Yeah, because John, I feel like you are really starting to rise up with the amount of documentaries and stuff, especially here in, in New England. Because I'm in New England too. I live in Massachusetts. Um, so even like seeing Snapper on Salem Horror Fest, like it. It's just proving that all your work is really starting to to pay off. I mean, he just did he did Pennywise, the story of it. This is, I think, the out of all the documentaries that I've seen listed that you've done, this has to be the biggest one. Would you agree on that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it took a village. There were so many of us that, that made it <laughs> possible, and um, obviously, the source material was so extensive, and we got more archive than I, I got on the Pet Cemetery doc, and and interviewed more people the pet cemetery doc was out of pocket so in some ways this was easier in the sense that we did have initially some funds to pay for it but um it was a big undertaking for all of us for sure five years in the making <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to ask um i think you kind of already answered it though john i, I was going to say as a very ambitious film slash documentary um what was the process of kind of getting it all rolling um but i think you kind of answered that when you were saying you know you uh with sort of making small little YouTube videos and stuff like that. And then you just kind of thought, hey, let's actually try and put this together as well, a documentary. What, what happened was we released the Pet Cemetery doc and then I went to Justin, my partner on that. And I said, hey, you know, I love the miniseries. Do you want to do a documentary on the miniseries? And he said, no, not at all. Like, no. <laughs> wow. um, he, had yeah. an eight -year, he had an eight-year-old and a four-year-old at the time. And we had spent so much time on the road doing that other doc that he was like, no, my kids are getting to the point where I can really do stuff with them. And I, not for me. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, maybe I'll do it on my own, which was I knew was a stupid decision. There was no way I could have done that on my own. And mm. I posted a picture on Facebook of a balloon and said something cryptic to the effect of, oh, my next project or something. Gary had seen that. 
And we've talked about this a lot. Gary can talk about it more, but Bart Mixon, who's a special effect <laughs> makeup legend, has worked on everything. You should see his resume on IMDb. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Gary, Gary and Chris had gotten to know him on their Fright Night doc and their Robo, Robocop doc. And I got to know Bart a little bit on Pet Cemetery. So we knew he had a huge archive from it. And we kind of built it around that, you know, getting Tim Curry and, and Bart's archive. And that's, that's one of the things that brought Gary and I together for this. John really pissed me off, to be honest. I saw that balloon. And we'd already <laughs> started talking about maybe doing something in regards to uh, thinking this. And John posted that and I thought, shit. So I think <laughs> we kind of connected. I, I think John had tried to reach out. I think we spoke that year before, John and I did, about fair use. And that's the bane of our life at the moment, fair use. But Oh, tell then, me about it. Back, back then, it was easier back then. Uh, a lot easier. Well, when it is now. Uh, but I think we'd, we'd kind of communicate that because I'd done, obviously, Leviathan. I'd done a work on more brains. And I think John, obviously, was doing his, his pet cemetery doc. And it just kind of came together. Obviously, you know, we had that initial email or face mask you had regarding the balloon kind of then like blossoms really then and then it's kind of snowballed that's a really cool creative way of doing it as well just like a cryptic that's yeah. very cool i had one ready already i had one already that's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my idea and literally we did we had like a bit of graphic this fucking balloon and then he did it first oh yeah. man yeah yeah i've told you a story before you literally i forgot you had a graphic yeah, yeah. ready Oh, yeah, man. we had it. That's when. That's why I think I emailed you straight away and said, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you guys? Did you find it easy? So once you like got the ball rolling on the project, did you find it? Was it kind of fairly easy to get everyone involved, get all the gang back together, so to speak? Like the, you know, the guys from the Losers Club. I know they do the rounds at the conventions and stuff. So I, I imagine they were probably really, really up for it. But like, you know, like trying to get you know Tim Curry and Seth Green as well, because. I know, I know that John's already got a big head, but I think he, de he really needs the credit on this one because we are done, obviously, the sourcing of interviews for RoboDoc and for what was it, over 100 people and for Howraise and whatnot. But mm. John, John really took the range in regards to Pennywise. But, um, mm. So I, I know you can answer this question, but, you know, just on, on the record, John deserves all the credit there for getting Tim and getting the key players, really. Um, and it, it wasn't easy, it never is, is it, John? No, mm. it's never easy. I mean, I think what worked in our favor this time was that we got Tim very early. Mm. Yeah. And once, once you go to somebody, whether it's any of the cast, and you say, we're doing this documentary, and Tim Curry is confirmed. Wow. <laughs> that really helps, you know. That, I was that, gonna ask that, you that too, yeah, wow. That gives, that gives you some legitimacy in the eyes of the people you're approaching. Absolutely. Um, the losers, the, the kids hadn't, most of them hadn't seen each other since the filming. So they're doing conventions and stuff now. But, you know, yeah. Gary and I and Chris, we would be sitting in the office when they were coming to L.A. to do their interviews. And they'd be kind of reuniting for the first time. Yeah. It was actually sort of cool to be a fly on the wall wow. for that. Um, yeah. but, but by and large, you know, with Pet Cemetery, it was a domino effect. You got one person and then they would vouch for you. You get another person. I'm sure it was similar for Gary and Chris. But with, with Pennywise, we got Tim pretty early. And then that we really use that to sort of hook other people you know yeah and I, I think actually I, kind of um okay. sorry to, to cut you off but um that's what i kind of wanted to uh lead into as well is like i can tell just by watching the doc like all the magic that was happening not even just related to like what was going on in the movie but having all these people whether they were there on the same day or not with recording or, or whatever it may be but the magic there must have been ridiculous like was it crazy if, if there was like more than like one or two um of the of the actors there at a time like how how were they interacting with each other after seeing not seeing each other for for so long i think the thing is john said you know for a lot of them it was reunion even for the crew as well you know you had producers coming together like jim green and, and mark coming together but it just it's really weird for us because it's also very stressful because you've got a very tight schedule yeah, you, you, you're hiring a studio, and I remember the studio was really hot, wasn't it, John? Oh, God. I think we were in a we were in a flight. Yeah, back. remember that? Yeah. So, because so Mikey, uh, one of our producers, and, and me, we had it easy. We were sitting in an air conditioned office, you know, meeting and greeting, doing scheduling, and obviously Chris and John and Adam were in the actual studio, which was literally like an oven. And as, as John said, it was a flight path over it. Um, but it's just really because it's really stressful. So it's kind of a bit of a conveyor belt to screen. Sometimes when they come in. And then start talking to each other. You're kind of looking at your watch, going, 
we've got to get him in the chair. And it's like, it's very kind of a weird, surreal yeah. experience because there's people standing there who you've been speaking to on an email, but then you recognise that Ben from the series, you know, that's little Ben, but now big, yeah. <laughs> now he's big Brandon. And, you know, and that's, you know, we, we know Bart, but, you know, Gene Wan Jr., people like that. But, you know, Dennis Christopher, I mean, you know, he's such a recognisable face, Dennis Christopher, and he's just sitting there chatting to you about LA traffic and he's <laughs> He's Uber screwed him around, I think they had, and dropped him off. And <laughs> anyway, so he's, so he's stressed about that. It, it's just, it's very surreal to hold, hold. Yeah, you know, I bet. Because they, they, they don't treat us as fans, which is good for us, and it's very difficult yeah. for us not to behave like fans. Because even yeah. though we are, I mean, we're gushing. So you've got to be really professional, but you're also nervous, and you're also nervous about time as well. Because one person going over just affects that whole kind of like day. And we yeah. were doing how many day, interviews a day, John. 10 interviews a day sometimes at the most but yeah, yeah. A lot. we started at seven eight in the morning and went you know till yeah, we, yeah. we were not seeing any sun and people go are you going on holiday oh. we were literally in that studio for three weeks we had a couple of days off which we needed but we were in as john said we were setting up at like seven in the morning and we were at and the time we come out it was getting dark you know we had something to eat and we just knackered then but that was like day after day doing that and then obviously yeah. we went to vancouver then after to go and do some of the others but I mean, I think for John as well, particularly because John had a lot of relationships with people on email and through Facebook with the losers particularly, it was probably more uh, of an emotional impact for John, I think, because I loved the miniseries, but John, like, you know, he's a super fan of the miniseries, and that's, that really helped us, obviously, production crew. So it was probably more impactful for John because they were coming in, you know, and you've been talk talking quite a long time, hadn't you, John, in advance? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was one of my questions, actually, was that out of out of the three of you, who would be considered the it mega fan? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely John. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man, but I can't that feel that. <laughs> but that happens in all our projects. That helps as well, because, you know, it means that there's somebody who knows every little bit of that, of that franchise. Now, we all learn it once we're on it. We're all experts by the end of it. But it means someone can dig a little bit deeper than just the general questions. And they, they haven't just looked into the database for some trivia. They've actually dug deep into that, you know, a whole kind of like, uh, you know, behind the scenes and whatnot. And we had it obviously with Robocop with, with Chris. You know, Chris is a huge Robocop fan. I was a huge Hellraiser fan in Fright Night. I'm a huge Robert fan. Um, so it kind of, it really helps having one person who's the probably the, the hardcore fan. And yeah. the people who aren't, and not, one of our producers, Adam, he completely doesn't give a shit. So you know, and that's, really good, but that's really good to have him because it's just level headed and we're all arguing. Yeah. And, we end up arguing on these shoots that we end up having tantrums and fights and, yeah. and someone to have somebody there who's a completely level going, you know, grow the fuck up, you know, just bringing just, it home. Yeah. 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 And we need really to work. Done. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. It just works. And I think we've got a real nice team going at the moment. And obviously that team's developed in the last three or four projects. So yeah, it works. Did you um, talk about the cast and the crew and, and, and all of those guys, did you ever have any communication with, with uh, Stephen King? Did he, did, was he, John, was he, involved in any not involved but did he kind of give his blessing or does i mean i think we reached out early i mean he's notorious for not doing these projects you know yeah. not giving these interviews yeah um, we 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 almost got him for the pet cemetery documentary and that fell through which is a different story um mm -hmm. but for this i think we may have inquired and he was doing a book tour the timing didn't work and um you know, I don't, in hindsight, I don't think he would have, we found a lot of great archive of King that we put in the film. Yeah, you know? that's really but good. His voice is in there. Um, See, but, but yeah, we didn't try too hard. I, honestly, I think I tried harder to get an Edo tool than I did King. Yeah, um, I, I think, I think with, with Stephen, sorry for interrupting, John, I think no, no, for, for me, I mean, and it's not saying in hindsight because we haven't got him, and it's easy for me to say, you know, what I'm going to say now because we haven't got him. Stephen King, obviously, there wouldn't be, a, 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 you know, a Pennywise about Stephen King. We know that. But when we hit the TV series, it's Tommy Lee Wallace's baby, really. And it's yeah. Bart Nixon's baby and it's Tim's. And I think he would yeah. have been good to have, obviously, Stephen at the beginning. But it would have just made a, a big chunk of that documentary would have been about Stephen King and his yeah. voice. And it, when would we have come in then into, obviously, having Tommy and Lawrence and, you know, and Larry, sorry, and, and Tim and Bart. And I think sometimes the bigger characters can really overshadow, you know, the project. Yeah. And I think particularly when, 
you look at Pet Cemetery, and I know it was hard for John not having him on that, but he was heavily involved in that film. You know, yeah. he'd written a script as well, had him in the script. Like, he was in the film. That wasn't the case with Stephen, with uh, right. you know um, Pennywise. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. the King's it. You know, it was literally sold. The rights were, and then it was written by Larry Cohen and obviously Tommy Lee Wallace. You know, Stephen King had nothing to do with the production, and you know, I know afterwards, obviously, he's given his views and he really loved it and whatnot. So I just think it would have been a very small piece of a very big jigsaw. Yeah, and absolutely. I, and, yeah, and John yeah. again, you know, John John is an amazing archivist. So John finding this footage, which we could use, and and having to find the rights to this footage as well and chase stuff like that. I think having his voice is in there. It's very much present. Then it moves on to Tommy's story. Then I, I, that's what I believe. I'm sure John will agree. Uh-huh. He, he always agrees with me. So <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, out of all the stuff that you you found, like all all the archive videos and behind the scenes, I wanted to know: Were you able to read through the original script? Like, was there a way for you guys to to see that, or um, or did you only get certain pieces to kind of put no. over some of the scenes that you yeah. guys were showing? We had the original script. Oh wow! I think naively we didn't copy it because it, again, it's one of them situations where I think Patrice. Who was the first AD? Bought the original script in, in with her, and we didn't have a you know the scanner we had and whatnot. But literally, she was like coming for interview and she was going, so we had to scan as much as we could. She put a massive folder of stuff in. I mean, a huge <laughs> folder. So we scanned them. What's so while John's interviewing? I'm at the back scanning stuff, and I'm seeing oh, wow. she's ready. You know, she's ready to go. So I remember going through the script and finding pages, and we found the page uh, of John, didn't we? Obviously, that Georgie's. Right, uh, being returned to the, the house and whatnot, but I, I do I regret it now because lots of stuff in Patricia's folders was brilliant stuff which we couldn't really show in the doc. It was like people's salaries were on there, you know. We knew how much, we knew we know how much Tim Curry was paid. We know how much you know, wow. how, yeah, and it was all there. We, we've got stuff like that which we couldn't use, but I do. That's my biggest regret, I think, because you can't find that script online. You just can't, you know, oh. you can't find the screenplay, and that, we had it in our hands for an hour. I think it's this yeah. big juicy thing. I'm mean, two different colors, wasn't it, John? I think was it blue yeah. and pink. Yeah, pink and blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just, yeah. And I, I, that's my biggest regret. I just wish John would have kept the talking even more. So we could just, <laughs> yeah. I'll just, just like give us some like Rohitna or something and just like knock but, her yeah. out. So I've got, I've got a go. copy now, G. So I, I can, I can mail it to you. you he's got everything. He's, he's got little, <laughs> of course, that's that's awesome. Awesome. a recent, a recent acquisition from Adam. See, that's Parisa. awesome. Yeah. See, and he didn't even bother using it with documentary, so he's selfish. He's kept that to himself. First time hearing about no, it. The fact that I got it three weeks ago is irrelevant. It's I should have put it in the doc, yeah. Well, we need to re-edit, we need to re-edit the doc. Yeah. Re-edit it, yes. Go go back yeah. another five years, get everything yeah, yeah. in there. Right. An extended version of Pennywise, the story right. of it, part two. So, <laughs> when you edit this interview, cut all that crap I just said. John's got a copy. <laughs> like yeah i didn't tell you but i have this now. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god i guess like you know the, the biggest thing that really came out of all of this um was finding you know a place for this movie to go to and that was Screenbox. uh were you guys aiming to to go on that or did they come forward with bloody disgust and be like hey we want to like put this out there um we want to get to you before shutter or or something like that uh, was was there any kind hmm. of um talkings no. about that we had somebody, which obviously you can't mention names, unfortunately. We had some somebody who's really interested, and we were literally about to sign a contract with another distri- production distribution company. Uh, and you know, it was at the time I was always a bit concerned because it was more of a business transaction more than anything for for them. And then suddenly comes along bloody disgusting and uh, and Brandon uh, Hill, and obviously Screenbox now. John had done a lot of work behind the scenes with Brandon. Uh, lots of connections there. Brandon Hill is the acquisitions chat for um, Cynodyne, which is Screenbox. I think Chris had already spoke to Brandon as well about RoboDoc as well. So it kind of against one of the things that just happens in you know in this independent world. Everything just comes together like a little jigsaw. And, and I, I've got to admit, they have been absolutely mate. I'm so, so glad we got on board with Screenbox. You know, the up and coming company with regards to the streaming platform, but they have been absolutely amazing. And I, I can't, can't, you know, give many more, many more credit, you know, and the stuff that they're doing, which again, we can't talk about with the release, which we've saw some stuff last night. It's just, it's just blow my mind, really. And I think, as I said, you know, said earlier on, John's been done, done about 25 interviews in the last, you know, three weeks. 
the marketing strategy they've had to promote this has been brilliant for us as a company and as individuals. Mm. So, yeah, it kind of, it, it just it happened. I think by you know serendipity and obviously by networking, uh, but we were close to somebody else. Um, I, I think something like Pennywise, Pennywise, something like Stephen King's It, is quite hard to sell. I think sometimes because it's it's such a niche kind of cult series. Yeah. You've got to mm. find the right home for that niche cult series. It probably wouldn't fit on Netflix, this series wouldn't, because it's not about a murder. It's not about, you know, uh, a Tinder swindler or whatever. It's the most very, hated you know, man on the internet. Well, yeah, I watched that the other day, yeah. That was quite good. That guy. Um, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of John a little bit. But, um, <laughs> so John's bad looking. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, he is, yeah. The hair. Um, so then, I think have I think find the find some of the right home and we found you got long hair as well. I never noticed that. Uh, and I think Screenbox was the right home for us. And I'm sure John will agree. I think they've been oh, absolutely. absolutely. Been, I think hopefully they blossom. Hopefully they go on to do more stuff. Um, you know, we're talking to some of our other projects at the moment. Uh, there will be announcements soon. You know, and I'm really, really, really happy with them. I'm so gutted I can't get to Screenbox, man. Over well, here in the UK. You know, but I will say, obviously, because obviously you're a podcast, maybe cut this bit out. If, if you contact me later on, I can put you in. They do, they're giving screeners out to a lot of podcast people. They are. Oh, wow. Uh, they're, cool. they're, yeah, they're, they're being brilliant like that. They haven't been, there's no, we're not precious to all our job in regards to that. You know, if anyone emails and asking for a review copy and you've got obviously a podcast or a pay, it's very much for out to people. Awesome. And, and that's I should cool. have reached out to you guys about that. I didn't even yeah. think about that. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's really unique, I think, because you find that people get really pressured. And we we had it for ourselves, and we can carry on obviously you know, using this bit, but you know, we're naive a little bit in obviously in the business because you know we've been working independently for a long time on our project. Yeah. So, mm. you know, we've had situations where we want to get this project out and we've been told we can't get it out because obviously if, if it gets out, I mean, yeah, it's going to get out. But actually, the screen box are completely opposite. They want people to see it. And, yeah. and I'm really, that's what's impressed me because, Brilliant, you, yeah. they, you know, I could create a website now and suddenly, you know, say I'm, I'm a screener and then put it everywhere. And they're not, you know, they're very, very keen on people seeing it. And you've seen the promotion, they, you know, they're doing mm. countdowns for like three or four weeks work now, you know, you know you don't get on you don't get on other platforms you don't get that yeah this is slightly off slightly off kilter but um you talked earlier on you, you have a lot of discussion about fair use and stuff like that did you did you have any issues with like warner brothers i would tell you it's an example of something that's happened to me recently with my my outsource stuff um i got i got a season desist through from warner brothers right we might you may want to cut this bit as well uh yeah. season desist from warner brothers <laughs> and um it was something to do with the names the parody satire yada yada um one of the issues that they had was so when i do events i take around a mannequin with me and i put different masks on it um just masks that i've bought you know from trick or treat one of the issues that they had was i put an it mask on the mannequin and just had it in the background on display i was like it's just a mannequin though it's just you know it's something that i've no, bought but we've been you have to go through a lot of different hoops with warner brothers or anything? no we i mean obviously don't obviously include this bit <laughs> but uh Regards to fair use is really strange anyway because I think documentary yeah. is a little bit different because it, you know you're celebrating a franchise, you're celebrating a film, you're promoting yeah. that film, and the yeah, matter of course, tweets, yeah, yeah. That, tweets that you're probably seeing where people have gone, I've won, I've revisited the, you know, the original series because of this. Yeah. That's what we're trying to achieve, and obviously we're not criticising. I know we have elements of documentary where we talk about things that went wrong, but we always then celebrate what you know what what came from the spider yeah. being a, a good argument, but. Um, you know, we we go for a fair use lawyer. We have you know, it costs a lot of money. It's assessed. It's insured. Um, yeah. You can use fair use on footage as long as it's contextual and narrative. So we are mm. very careful on that. You know, and mm. if we're talking about Pennywise's costume, we can show footage of that costume because it's contextual. We can't yeah. just show it for the sake of So we've had to look really smart. You know, regards yeah. to, and that's why it's taken time in the doc as well. People again think you can just throw it together and it goes out there. We've yeah. had to do this, ticking lots of boxes we didn't have to tick yeah. before. So when we did the first cut of it, you went to the lawyers, it came back and, it, if I, you know, imagine an Excel document with a thousand different oh, man. columns. Oh, wow. And nope, nope, 80% nope, nope. of those columns are red. Oh, fuck. Yeah, they and came then, back with like yeah. four or 500 notes from the attorney. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. So wow, that, yeah, and, you know, and that's protect us really and protect obviously the company and the filmmaker, yeah, course, protect yeah. the screen box. So, um, We've been lucky, and again, and I think it'd be hard to prove 
for anybody that we were doing, we were damaging a project. Uh, yeah. You know, we've been yeah. looking at Sony. I mean, Sony, when we did Fright Night, I had an email off Sony, and the, and the header was, you also call Bruce, and I shit myself thinking, oh, God, I'm going to get sued, and get sued. And they wanted to license it for their Blu-ray. Wow. And then they have, and then a re-release on the HD, uh, 4K, a Fright Night, which comes out soon, I think October, and it's back oh, on there fun. with bonus features, wow. which we did. So, you know, they understand that, that stamp, and we got stamp of approval that um, we were doing it to celebrate their product. And their, so it's just very difficult. I'm, I, I know, I think you probably know Allocate Graphics. Yeah, uh, I know uh, John. Yeah, 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 yeah. John. Yeah. He, he's had a few cease and desist, you know, over the years. Oh, I'll chat to him today, actually, yeah, John. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, just doing a pin badge, what's the problem? Yeah. So, no, uh, yeah. you know, uh, as much as you can edit all around that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's a long process. We have to go through it. And we're doing it at the moment with Robert Stock. You know, John's yeah. got, every time we do something, John checks, you know, and we have a yeah. conversation that we join about every single image. We have a conversation about is this contextual? Is it narrative? Where's it come from? What would the lawyers say? You know, yeah. you're talking to lawyers, yeah. what charge them $600 an hour? You know, what would they say, you know, for this? So, um, We've been very. We've learned to be very smart. I think with fair use and and yeah, uh, and license, and, we, and you have to. Li- we've had to spend thousands of pounds licensing stuff as well. You know, yeah. we've had to license images from you know the mini series. We've had to license images from Tim's little work, and that's not cheap, is it, John? It's like four or five hundred dollars a picture. Wow. You know, and yeah, we've, we've got the, and we've got the pictures in our office at home. You know what I mean? Which we could have just put on, but you've got to you've got to unfortunately go through some hoops. The right channels, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Sorry. There's always some sort of headache with filmmaking, especially when it comes to documentaries. So I can understand why they'll be like really on you with certain things to make sure you're giving a good representation of it. And this documentary is is amazing. Um, I didn't have Screenbox prior to this. It made me go and you know get a subscription to Screenbox. Good. So good on you guys for you know building their fan base over there. Um, and I can't wait to see if there's going to be any physical releases of this because you know I'm going to be buying every single one of them. Um, and it's it's such a great doc. I'm I'm honestly going to be watching it again after this. I watched it this morning, and I'm going to put it on again, uh, just because it, it every, all the stages you go through, all the chapters, and you know, you know, really highlighting everybody who was in the film and all the people that were, were able to be there um, for this documentary. Um, it really does prove that this film was a work of art, and you can never replicate this. Uh, this the magic and everything that that happened, you know, with Tim Curry in it. Um, with even with you guys having Tim Curry on on there and him just talking and just listening to him talk about his experiences and and what he remembers um, is so magical and I I really can't thank you guys enough for for pulling something like this together for you know us fans of of horror or just of Pennywise and it it's it's great we appreciate that you know genuinely because I think for us when you're so close to the source material. It's always a worry what people are going to think of when it comes out. I think because there's been such a delay on this for five years, and we've had such, you know, and it's not about we're not heroes, we're not here to, you know, get sympathy, but we've had such abuse really and, and trolls on this project. Yeah. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's some amazing people who have been so supportive and just want to see it and they understand it's going to happen. But for it to come out and have such good feedback, mm-hmm. and it's just been, it had made it all and that stress kind of sounds stupid you kind of you forget how bad it was and it was bad you know we've never given up in five years trying to get this out we've never given up and it's and it's here it's finally here and you know there's still a way to go with the physical release in the uk distribution and the worldwide distribution but we're on that first step and you know yeah. to, to get it out there you know and people to enjoy it but that's really nice to hear because i think you know um as i said uh, you don't see it sometimes you don't think it's going to yeah. be as well received as it has been i'm so happy it has been you know because it was it's a labor of love definitely i think too with these documentaries and i'm sure gary would agree chris and i have talked about this that our goal we have a lot of goals but one of them is that we really want these docs to be sort of be like the definitive say on these films you know like we don't want to leave anybody an opportunity to do another doc on it or, or fright night or robocop it's like we want these to be like the last word um mm-hmm. which is a lot of pressure but i think it's good pressure you know it forces us to try to go above and beyond um but no i'm we're glad that you love the, the doc so much as gary said you lose perspective after yeah. a while mm-hmm. so 
Yeah, it's great. And um, one uh, final question I, I want to ask is, um, was there a favorite part of filming all of this that um, that you uh, liked the most? Like, we'll start with John. Was there something that was like very like, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe we're able to do this right now. Like, did you have like one of those moments while doing this? I had a couple. I mean, one has to be, you know, going to Tim Curry's house. Oh, in, wow. In, in Burbank with the guys to interview him. Um, you know, we showed up and he had iced coffee and cookies <laughs> and stuff for us. And just to be setting up in his living room, he's got a lot of fan art that people have sent him over the years hanging on his walls. And, um, cool. and then just be in that space with him and, and interview That's awesome. him. And, um, obviously a once in a lifetime thing um that that for me has got to be the top yeah i mean i would be like to the moon if it was like yeah just come over to my house and i'll show you around and here's, here's some coffee and cookies like wow this is that like all the conventions you know even you know with his health problems and whatnot but he's always there for the fans always yeah. and he's never gonna stop and um you know god bless him because he's he's a trooper you know and oh, having him on that dock is it's crazy because you would think with you know with how he is right now with you know health wise he would probably have been like no i'm, I'm okay i just kind of want to stay low but I'll, I'll give you some input or whatever but for him to actually be there invite you guys over and like have an actual spot in this documentary that's mind-blowing i think we got lucky with the timing because uh, when we got the green light from tim he had just started to do conventions and also the buzz was starting with the new films, with Andy Muschietti's films. Yeah. So I just think we, we kind of hit it at the right time, which was largely coincidental, I think. But um, I think it made a lot of things possible that maybe weren't, wouldn't have been otherwise. For sure. Um, what about Tim? you, Gary? I mean, it's going to be the same. It's going to be, it's going to be Tim. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you I can think, top that. Yeah, I just think going to his house, as John said, you know, it was such a... So, a strange experience a nerve-wracking experience and we were shitting ourselves beforehand and we were panicking and we didn't think it was going to happen still and we and we finally got there and we got into the house and we were waiting for him you know we're in his living room and he's not there and he's obviously suddenly you can hear him coming in and he was just witty sarky funny all of that in one go despite the health issues he was he was you could see that twinkle in his eye really and he just had very much the that I don't want to say that British wit, but he had that kind of like you know cheekiness about him still, and uh, we uh, you know and it was kind of as John said I think at the time because this was six years ago you know five years ago, and obviously you know he had the uh, stroke uh, was it 2012 I think it was yeah, I think stroke? around there yeah so there wasn't a you know a huge you know, you know at one stage I remember the news articles coming out saying he'd never speak again you know he was that ill and. You know, you get hopefully rehabilitation, you get better and better as years go by. So we we got him at a stage where you know he was actively you know talking to people, and obviously as John said he was going back on the convention scene. Uh, I think we got as much as we could out of him um, in the sense of he was happy to be on board. He really wanted to talk about it because he was tired of talking about say you know uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show and that kind of stuff for the first wow. time. People talking about Pennywise to him uh, and that impact of that character. Um, Again, like most actors, for them, it's just a job. You know, they come on the set and they go home. So, you know, we, and we, we had a review last week, and I'm not going to be negative about it, but it just one of the reviews we had. It was a really, really nice review. And then the last bit was, he wasn't in it enough, Tim Curry. You know, it's two hours, he's not in it enough. I think what we got out of Tim in the circumstances was brilliant. And I think I'm so proud that he's in the dock. I'm so grateful for John's hard work getting him in the dock because he made it. And I know we had a conversation, John and I did at the very beginning. If we didn't get Tim, was it worth doing? Because the whole point was, this is Tim's legacy. Now, yeah. that's not saying it isn't Tommy's or Bart's, but uh, it was so important for us to get Tim. And, and as soon as we got it, it just rolled. So I think it cannot be other than having Tim to be our favourite moment. And we had a laugh on that shoot. It was stressful. And we bonded as a team, you know, and, and we, we went to Vancouver together and we walked, you know, we had some funny stuff happen in Vancouver where I mean, we bumped into Neve Campbell, didn't we, in the woods, you know, she just walked past us. <laughs> we, locked, we locked our producer, Mikey, in, in, in the car, the windows <laughs> up, you know, 120 degrees, nearly killed him. 
you know, <laughs> it was just great. And again, and I'm not, I'm not a location person, you know. And when I used to see John post about location, I used to think, what a sad though. You're going to Mar- Martha's Vineyard and that. But actually, when we got to, and John dragged us to, you know, in Vancouver to where it was filmed, and I didn't want to go. And I remember thinking, shut up, John, don't go to the library. I don't want to go to some bloody, the Barons. But when you got there, and we were at the Barons where the kids were, and we actually found the exact same place, you just felt like you, you got absorbed into that world. You know, it was like time travel. And it was something I didn't expect to happen until I was there. And, and that's another experience for me. And again, thank John for that because he's a saddo. But I just think doing that and actually experiencing where the kids are actually playing and being filmed was just amazing. And, you know, and I bet you people walk past that area every single day and wouldn't have a, have a clue. Yeah. That's where it was filmed. Uh-huh. And they'll go to the library where we went, you know, um, and we spent a few hours in that library, didn't we? You know, where yeah. the, people wouldn't even have a clue that it was a library. Oh, it's not a library is it anymore, John. What is it? It's like a, like a center, isn't it? some kind of event hall. Yeah, yeah. But you never have realised that's where. It I mean, it, it helped in the edit just to have that footage anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's me. And it became it became gold to us that, that footage did because we could then just show the audience what had the difference. You know, from I don't know, I remember getting on a tricycle. You know, and we're pretending I was on a tricycle where the little girl got killed. You know, <laughs> uh, and it was, like, it was exactly right. the same, wasn't it? Just that little yeah. bit. Just for oh, it. And I, you know, so Tim's massive, but second for me was locations. I never ever thought I'd ever say sit here and say locations was was a highlight, but it really was. Yeah. Wow. It made me then a year later when I went to LA, I went to go and visit Return of the Dead locations. I became sad to start visiting locations. But again, being there then going, I swear if I can shot Return of the Living Dead. And that's oh, down to John. Like that, yeah. But that's down to John, you know, I give him credit for that. Gary's yeah. drinking the Kool-Aid. You're drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Gary, do you remember when we were with Tim? I had forgotten about this until just recently. We showed him some of Bart's footage on my laptop. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. That yeah. was cool to show him yeah. the footage he's never seen. Yeah, yeah. He never wow. seen it. And it was also, it just, it was so funny about that day was because it was real stressful. I mean, it came in the end, it was like it all calmed down and, and Tim's sitting outside next to his pool with Chris having a cigarette. It's just, it's, it was just surreal, wasn't it? And we're just, me and him are just peering through the window, desperate to be there. <laughs> <laughs> we, nearly took up, we nearly took up smoking that day, didn't we, John, just to get outside, oh, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but just, yeah, I mean, we've been so blessed and so lucky, and about being like, you know, cliche. Uh, and the biggest hero, I think, on this project is Bart Mixon. Yeah. Without question, he's the biggest hero because he, he gave us you know, three hours, or whatever it was, two hours of behind the scenes footage no one's ever seen precious wow. precious material didn't charge us a dime for it wanted it shared with the world and gave us free reign to use over we had over 700 images i think you know something like that most of them were from him we had a lot of other people of course as well we were very very lucky with the archive you don't get that on projects you know we're doing the robert one now and and john's been again brilliant getting the archive but it's, it's a lot harder i think just because it's so many different films and trying to get stuff which relates to, to Robert particularly. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, that's a job in itself. That takes weeks and months, doesn't it, just to get that stuff. Yeah. Uh, another thing that um, that really, you know, proves that it was such a big part of my life is that my podcast is, is named after the Barons, uh, Barons Hideout. Yeah. So uh, that's another thing. So I, I have it pretty much everywhere in my life right now. I have a bunch of fan art and stuff behind me as well. I can see, yeah, I can see Pennywise peering above your head. Yeah, yeah, I have so much stuff over there. It's, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, this was an absolute honor to have oh, both you. of you on. Um, Dean, I don't know if you have any last questions that you wanted to ask. Um, but that's that's good, all, that, all that I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ha- I had a few, but the guys have answered uh, it already. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you, you pretty much answered the other thing I was going to ask if there was anything else in the work, but uh, you guys pretty much answered that with the Robert England one, which. I'm excited for, and we would love to have you on uh, to talk about that one as well. It's going to be, it's going to be a good one, Matt. We're, we're really, really happy with it, you know, and it, and it celebrates him beyond Freddy, uh, which I think is really important for Robert. So I'm really, really happy with that. Yeah, that that's, cool. that's definitely like a, a huge milestone right there to deal with another very iconic actor in, in the horror world or just in the film world in general that's that's amazing so well, congrats it, it, to both of you with it, your it, with your careers 
no fan get any different kind of route for us and I think it's hopefully a route with me and John and Chris have been talking about expanding because we've always done film retrospectives we've always done about one particular you know uh, aspect and with Robert we've been able to dip into comedy drama and the horror yeah. and, things like, and obviously then somebody's life as well and how they've started and their personal relationships and I think you know we're already talking John and I about stuff and, and Chris and and I and it's going to be obviously hopefully soon once all this is done the three of us to get our heads together and start moving forward on, on our next project beyond Robodoc and beyond um, uh, Icon and beyond Police Academy. Uh, We're going to awesome. do a doc about Gary's life. That's going to be the next yeah. project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's <laughs> life is. <laughs> um, I guess one last thing I wanted to ask Gary is that the Pennywise costume behind you, is that an actual screen used one or is that uh, a, a store no, bought? I, I'm not John Campo Piano. That was, that, that, <laughs> I was that like, was here you go. <laughs> yeah. No, John's got two costumes. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, John, John, John can find an archive, and John somehow hypnotizes people <laughs> to give them their stuff they've had in storage for 30 years, which cost a fortune. <laughs> Some, something he does, I think he gets photographs with them, and then he blackmails them or something. You know, <laughs> because he manages to get... I'll never screen, tell. Yeah, he gets sc- two screen-worn costumes. I'll never tell. Now he's got a bloody script, which he didn't tell us about. So... I don't know what he does to these people, but the thing, but again, I think just the way John's very charming, and that's why I love him because I want some photographs for one of my projects. I send John to go and get them within an hour. I've got a Dropbox file with 400 pictures on, Jesus. so that's why I like using John. <laughs> got the magic, no, he's got John, the magic, he's got master, something, man. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got their phone numbers and their addresses as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> send John in to get some screen use, yeah, yeah. Comes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I will be. Don't worry. <laughs> oh man. I think a friend of mine did some artwork for you guys actually for the icon. Uh, Gareth, Gareth Gibson, did he do? Yeah, some Gareth. Art? And he did Pennywise as well. So oh, all Gareth, the anima- I did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did all my logos for me. Did he? he did all my bottle logos and everything. Yeah, yeah. So and it, all the animations in Pennywise is Gareth's work. Oh wow! Same as, right, there's quite okay. a lot. It's, so when you know, when you can't find an archive or images. And to tell a story, it's, it's great to use with like Gareth. We can just have that story yeah. visualized. It's supposed like to have a talking head. So we yeah. used him on, on, on Pennywise. He's also done some icon stuff for us. Well, he's done quite a lot. I think 26 images, I think he's done animations. Oh, that's icon. amazing. I have yeah, no idea, so, man. No, he's brilliant. No, we, and, you know, we work with quite a lot of people who kind of just come on board and, you know, get, become part of the team and whatnot. So, yeah, it's, 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 always, cool. it's always good stuff. Yeah, he was my first ever convention neighbor. And um, when I did yeah. a horror, horror con in Sheffield, actually, and I loved his work. And I was like, dude, I need some new logos. <laughs> so he just yeah. did all my logos and everything for me. And we've just been friends ever since. So yeah, he's a really he's cool good man. lad. Yeah, he's a really good yeah, lad. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. The world is a small place. <laughs> when it you is. Think of it. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 uh, I, mean, I, I literally did a post about an hour ago about, you know, I've got an idea for the final Robert poster. Uh, and I did a post just on Facebook about, you know, any artists out there would like to work with us. And I've literally, my phone has not stopped. I'm sitting <laughs> here looking down and it's like, I've had about 60 messages, I think, just the people just saying, you know, offering, I'm, I'm in the shit now because I've got to go through them and tell, tell <laughs> 59 people no. <laughs> it's like, anyway, that's another job for another day. Oh, man. Well, congrats on, on all the um, success that both of you are really going through. This, this is really an honor to, you know, sit down and speak to the people who are, know they're at hand and you know being able to pull all this stuff together and with john's you know smoothness of being able to get whatever he wants whatever yeah, yeah. he wants not always <laughs> not always not a netto tool or Stephen yeah. king so he failed on those two yeah i did yeah <laughs> and john ritter he failed on and jonathan brandy so i'm not that good <laughs> yeah. well, it is, it, but it's team effort, and I, I go yes. on about it. It is genuinely, and we've been very lucky to get people come on board. You know, we had Lawrence Gornhall, and we've had Hank Stars come on board as producers. Mm. Sean Schaefer Hennessy is an amazing, amazing uh, composer. Gareth, obviously, with the artwork, one with the poster, Daniel Zachary, Lowe's with the poster as well. Zachary, Zachary, Brown, Zachary with the, and Zachary Brown Jackson's art now is being used on everything with regards wow. to the guy. I mean, he's, he's, he's Pennywise. And they just released his yeah. music. That's that's yeah, incredible. yeah. You know, yeah, the score for the doc just got released. Oh, yeah. I'm picking that up or listening to it. Yeah, wherever yeah. I, I hear it's do. coming on vinyl eventually. Oh, so, really? I'm grabbing oh. that. What Amazing. Get one, yeah. get one of them for free, John. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we, we're really lucky. Yeah, people come on board just literally. And Mikey Prayers will give him an Eastwood Allen. And the list goes on and on and on. It's, it's very much, you look at the credit list, the credits are quite small. 
for a documentary, yeah. but those people have, give, have given blood, sweat, and tears literally for five years, and we've battered these people massively to get what we want, and we've achieved, obviously, you know, hopefully, what people like. Well, that's awesome. Like, you know, thank you guys for you know taking some time out of your day to come and talk to Dean and I about this amazing documentary. For anybody who hasn't seen it, please go watch it. Get Screenbox or just rent it wherever you can rent it right now, and uh, please watch this. And it'll be worldwide soon so for anybody who can't get it right now it will be there soon um this was amazing uh, dean i don't know if you have any last remarks that you would like to say before we close out i just want to watch it so bad now <laughs> <laughs> i want to watch this goddamn documentary Me- man you need to show me how to use that vpn dustin yeah <laughs> yeah 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 gary sent it to you so um yeah. yeah thank you guys so much for for being thank here yeah thank you problem. And um, I'm you. gonna go back and actually rewatch all the other docs that uh, you guys have done as well. I'm slowly making my way through. Um, I did see the Pet Cemetery one, I think, a year or two after it was released, but I just rewatched it again today. And I really want to watch all the other ones because I love the work that both of you guys are doing right now. It's it's amazing. Well, I, I think Brewster will end up on a streaming service very soon. Okay, cool, awesome. <laughs> Can't wait. Somewhere maybe, somewhere maybe Pennywise maybe. I've heard that rumor. Yeah. I've heard that yeah. rumor. Yeah. Gary, yeah. can we can we say anything about physical releases or no? Are we are we? Uh, oh I, you oh know, yeah, I if you have info, sure. I don't, I'm not sure. We haven't signed anything. I mean, I if you haven't signed anything, you might be okay. Just, just, just say it. We'll blame you. <laughs> we'll blame, yeah, blame me. <laughs> You're charming yeah, enough to get out of any trouble, John. It's uh, a, bl- a Blu-ray <laughs> is definitely coming. I can say that. Bl- yeah, Blu-ray is definitely coming. Blu-ray, all right, definitely grabbing that. We can't say, but something else is coming, which is not a Blu-ray. But in 1990, you could have got one. But something else is coming. Okay. Yep. So, however, the original film was released after it was aired on TV, that will be coming. All right. Awesome. Which we're we're very, very, very proud of. I think. Wow. I think I think people are gonna love the laser disc. (laughs) <laughs> yes. I think it's a beta max you said. Oh, beta max, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's going to be. I, I think that again, that shows the caliber of company we are working with, where yeah. they've invested and understand there's a, there's a fan base for this and a nostalgic fan base for it. Uh, again, I was like, what, what what's going on? And then when I've seen it, seen it, and it's like. I'm really looking forward to what we have to come. And the UK as well. I know the UK deal is virtually, it has been signed. The UK deal has. We're just doing deliverables for that. Uh, I, I, I know it's definitely a Blu ray release in the UK, uh, but I'm assuming it's going to be an iTunes UK as well. It's going to be Amazon UK as well. The, I mean, the amazing speaking. thing is, since this dropped, I mean, I'm sure you've been getting similar messages, Gary, but on the, on the Pennywise Instagram account, I mean, People from Mexico, Brazil, yeah. Argentina, Italy, Canada, I'm forgetting countries, are all like, when can we see this? Europe as well, for me, it's a big one, yeah, like, you know, Germany, you know, Germany, all yeah. like that. you're just you're desperate to see it. And it's great, people are desperate to see it, really, isn't it? And I just want to say to me, it's not our fault, you know, <laughs> we want it out there, there's nothing more than we want, it's people to see this, you know, there's no reason why we want to keep it on a shelf for another two or three years. It's unfortunately, it's a process you have to go through. You have to do deals with different territories. Uh, we've got amazing set of people who are doing them deals for us. Yeah, it's not as easy as that. You know, we had an Australian premiere recently. I think we're going to have some UK screenings. I know that's a Scotland screen hopefully happening. And I'm talking to today about that. Um, so you know, we've had some Americans already with John's attended. So there will be some screens over here as well. Um, but anyway, uh, sorry, that's the dog. It's all good. <laughs> you guys, you guys uh, again. Was it in Fright Fest at all? Did they pick it? Sorry. Yeah. So last year we uh, we had a couple of premieres. So we oh. had. Uh, sorry, I, I was going to apologise for these dogs at the beginning, but they've been so good this evening. Now the little shits. Um, we oh. we premiered at Stitches, uh, Stitches Film Festival. Sorry. Stitches. Uh, is that one in yeah. Barcelona? That one. Uh, I think somewhere in Spain. Yeah. Stitches. Chris, yeah, 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 Stitches, yeah. Yeah. Chris went to that last year for the premiere. And that was a bit of a rough kind of cut of the doc. We were still working mm. on the, the grade and whatnot, but it was received really well there. And we went to then a screening in London at Fright Fest. Mm. And that was on a big IMAX screen. It was unbelievable. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. And, it was, and it was full of screen wise. And John didn't experience any of that. It was a real shame because, you know, mm. this is from when you work with people overseas. You know, you know there's that mass. Yeah. There's no way we can do those things, you know, together. Uh, and John didn't experience that. But, Thankfully, John's experienced it since. Obviously, with his hometown, 
and obviously another couple of screenings and hopefully more. We 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 had the theatrical rights to Pennywise still. One mm. again, having been able to retain that is not unheard of, really, isn't it, John? You know that. No, right, yeah. You know we've been allowed to retain those, so we can do screenings if you know if people are interested. John's your man for obviously the US, and I can organise the UK ones, but um. Uh, it's just great to see it on a big screen, you know, a dock as well on a big screen is really nice. But yes, it's like Stitches and the uh, Bright Fest. Oh, yeah. You should try and link something up at like the Prince Charles Cinema and get some guests to do some Q&As or something they do. They always do stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, it's saying like, it's, again, it's probably, for, for us, it's kind of a, the, the downside for us as Brits is that you, John could, you know, go to a, a screen in, in LA, hopefully, yeah. and the other cast can prove it, because one in Vancouver, for us, we, we get... Yeah, you get Jared. You get Jared. He's in Leicester, Jared, I think. Yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> us and Jared sitting in there. Yeah. Um, but I would love to do a screen over here. Do you know what I mean? I'd love to all to be together for a screening. You know, including John, and uh, I, that may happen. I think maybe something like Robert's one because it's a little bit different. It's more of a broader appeal. Oh, that'd which be it, amazing. Just, it just is by default. So. Yeah. You know, you can put that in a, in a cinema and get probably a little bit more traction than you would RoboDoc or you would. Of course, COVID made it. everything harder for oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. But no, so again, it's just it's just been an amazing journey. Really have. Oh, real guys, I seriously can't wait to watch it. I'm, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I want to watch. I want to watch it. I haven't seen it for like since the kind of like the, the stages, the final cuts, and the grading. Yeah. And yeah. Again, you're so absorbed in it. And you, you're weird. You, you, I'm not sure. Probably John's the same. Once you work on these projects, you've got to separate yourself a little bit from them. And I didn't watch Return of the Living Dead for about five years after working on that. And it's my favorite yeah. film. But you have to step away from it because you live it so much. But I actually think I'm at a stage now where I want to watch it. I want to sit down and, you know, light yeah. up and watch it properly. Because uh, yeah. I said we're immensely proud. I repeat myself on that. I think we are, all are. Oh, I shit you not. We Dustin last night. We were we were trying to. I was like, really? right, I need to watch this documentary, and we tried every single thing possible, and all I kept getting was a black screen. I was like, what's going on? That's the doc. It's all it's all black. Is it? <laughs> well, it sounded good. And then I a red, hear it. A, I just a red balloon just appears then. <laughs> <laughs> With no rights to any footage or any clips, just pop my red balloon. There was there was subtitles. There was there, I could see subtitles. Oh really? Like, and nice. I could hear it. Yeah. But I couldn't see anything. But I'm I'm a purist, man. As soon as I can get hands on a physical copy of that, Same. I'll be doing that. Sure, yeah. I, I can't I'm, guess, that I'm guessing you're probably gonna be in Manchester for the love of horror this year, Gary. So if it does if you are there and it does come out, you're gonna sign a copy of that for me, man. Yeah, yeah, because grab one from me too, Dean. Yeah. The Fright oh, yeah. Night people there, aren't they? The Fright Night yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll catch it with them. And Tommy should be there. Tommy Lee. I, I think Tommy's there as well. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So, so hopefully he'll make a deal of that. Actually, that'll be good for maybe do a screening up in Manchester if uh, yeah. if if Tommy's around, you know, and he's up for it. I don't know what. I don't know if you, we had no feedback yet from Tommy, have we, John? If Tommy's seen the doc, everybody else in the cast, thank God, have watched it and they've <laughs> loved it. You know, you call, you know, I don't know about Tim and that, but the kids have all loved it, the losers. And you know, I got a, I got a really nice email today, uh, Gary, from Larry Cohen. Oh, I'm really? Like over the moon about it. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Good, because he's, he was right. such, we didn't meet, I didn't meet him personally, so I'm going off on one now. Right. He was just fucking great interview. I really liked him. I, and again, having him in the dock and, and being so honest as well about night two, do you know what I mean? For someone to sit there and be honest about yeah. your work, that's unusual, you know, because everyone gets an ego and everyone who gets a career as well and being so long in the career, be, you know, don't, it's all rose tinted, isn't it? And mm. I think what we had on this project was people weren't rose tinted at all. People were very honest, but there's a love yeah, for were. it and, and, you know, genuine is a love for it. And Larry was one of them, you know, he's open about night too, you mm. know, and obviously so was Tommy. Uh, and I love Tommy the bits after we did Fright Night with him. Uh, mm. So he's great. So hopefully we can hook up with him. That's awesome, man. And yeah, and John could sell one of his suits or his script and come over, couldn't they? That's that, that's Isabella's college fund. I'm gonna hang out. With her. <laughs> hopefully, the person who gave you won't be around by that time, so you can do what you want with it. <laughs> Not hopefully, obviously, you know, probably. Anyway, probably. cut that back. It's, it's math. It's math. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's life. <laughs> All right. Well, once so, again, guys, thank you so much for taking the time out and, and coming over to uh, speak with Dean and I about this amazing doc and. I want everybody to go watch it, Dean. We will get you to watch it. Don't worry, we'll we'll get you that yeah. that uh that link or whatever so you can see it. 
And um, hopefully we'll be talking to you, to both of you soon. Um, for any yeah, other projects you have, we'd love to have you back on to kind of just promote anything that's coming out. Because um, this was awesome, and obviously this was something that I grew up with, and I was I'm really attached to even till today. Um, I still occasionally like skim through the book, I may not read the whole thing, but just go to my certain like parts of it that I really really liked. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this was definitely a pleasure. So thank you both for for being here. No, thank you. It's, I really yeah, enjoyed it. Fun. It's nice to find your speech and not see the back of your head as well, Dean. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I wasn't yeah. thinking that. I was say I've always seen yeah. around. I never actually come and said hello. So yeah, next I just thought you. I just thought you were ignorant, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just shy, Gary. I'm just shy, man. Yeah. I tasted his sauce. It wasn't that good, so sure. Yeah, you threw up after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in hospital uh, three weeks after. So, oh wow, anyway, that wasn't really <laughs> disclaimer. That was a lie. It's amazing. <laughs> Bye, at the end. You yeah. edit that bit out, Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So right. I appreciate it. Thanks, gents. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, nice one, guys. Thank you. And this was the Baron's Hideout Podcast. This was our episode on Pennywise, the story of it with John and Gary. Thank you guys so much for being here, and we'll talk to everybody soon.